Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to our talk today. Um, I'm Nolan Leek. I'm the co founder of a co founder of Cumulus Networks. And unlike my friends here, I, everyone here might not know what Cumulus uh, Networks does. So I'll give you a brief overview. We have a Linux distribution uh, called Cumulus Linux that uh, is unusual in that it runs on switches. It runs on top of rack and spine switches. Um, and it is essentially a hardware accelerating the networking functionality of the existing Linux kernel. I'm Brad Watkins. I work for Red Hat in the NFE Partner Engineering Group and worked with Nolan on, on this installation. Hi, I'm Javan Twirk. I'm part of uh, Dell Networking and I'm responsible for software defined networking and solutions around soft, uh, OpenStack. Okay, so. Why did we do this? And you know, here's the overall agenda. We're going to talk what what were we trying to prove here? You know, how did we go about um, planning it out? You know, how did we use virtual machines uh, to kind of help us uh, get ahead of the game when we actually had access to the lab? And then kind of what we learned um, uh, from this process. So we wanted some questions answered, right? Like. We wanted to prove out that we could very quickly and in an automatic fashion roll out an entire OpenStack cluster covering networking, the controller nodes, and the compute nodes. And we had limited time uh, in, Dell graciously gave us some time in their lab, but it was a limited amount of time. So we wanted to make sure that we knew everything would work before we got in there. So we decided to prototype everything in virtual machines first, both the, the, uh, the switches and the, the servers. And we wanted to try a not uncommon, but a still somewhat um, un uncommon topology, which is using VXLAN to provide the L2 connectivity to the uh, VMs, and less commonly, running the layer three boundary all the way down to the vSwitch. To do this, we, were, we used Ansible and Git, uh, the idea being that we can have a single kind of unified uh, set of tooling for both the uh, servers and switches. And we wanted to see if we could do this all remotely. Um, I'm located in Mountain View, uh, Brad, I think. I'm outside of Detroit and Santa Clara, California. Santa. So, so one person lo local, but uh, so we, we wanted to see if we could do it remotely. And you know, to, to spoil the surprise, the answer is yes. So our first step is we needed a lab. This is, uh, this is the lab that Dell graciously let us use. Uh, this is the, actually the only time I was in this lab for this entire project, and someone else was using it at this point, so I wasn't allowed to really touch anything. I was kind of breaking the rules a bit there. So uh, you saw that picture over there. Um, what essentially this lab is trying to be, try to do in this lab is uh, build a proof of concept and any concept before um, any customer would like to see any performance, benchmarking, or anything, any other, uh, um, any other feature uh, in, a, in an end-to-end -end solution where they would have to have a, a scalable so a rack of servers, scalable number of switches, and storage and everything included. So uh, the first thing that we do have in this one is about uh, a nine racks worth of uh, equipment, which is pretty significant and really large for uh, most data centers are probably half that size in many cases. Um, so this is a fairly large data center like uh, emulation, which we try to make. And uh, the one, one of the big things about it is that we try and have this set up remotely accessible. So except for maybe one time somebody stepped in there, but I think every single part of the deployment of OpenStack and uh, Cumulus uh, and everything was done really all remotely over VPN. Um, essentially, these are um, R220 servers, PowerEdge servers from Dell, uh, with the 16 gig RAM and uh, quad core processors, um, with uh, two t t 10 gig adapters for dual homing into top of rack switches. So we try and build an end-to-end -end, uh, a, a fairly large leaf and spine architecture uh, using this particular lab. And what you actually get out of it is a fairly large, significantly a large bandwidth handling for east-west traffic. So in overall, uh, this is about six spine switches, 18 leaf switches, which is about good enough for about 15 terabits worth of east-west traffic inside the network. And uh, so that's these, these switches are essentially uh, Trident 2 based. Uh, they, we, they, could, they are capable of doing VXLAN hardware offload and uh, at line rate, so they can do uh, the VXLAN layer 2 gateway functionality as well. 
So the first step is, you know, we need to design the network. And so one unusual, slightly unusual thing we decided to do was to run routing all the way down to the hypervisors themselves. So to achieve that, we deployed the Cumulus version of Quagga, which since it runs on Cumulus Linux is happy to run on any Linux. Um, so we deployed that on the Red Hat Enterprise Linux on the servers and had it peer with the top of rack switches. So if you see those, those two links going up to the top of rack switches, those are not a bond. That is not an MLAG. You see there's no inner switch link between the two top of rack switches because it's not needed. So what's happening is the servers themselves are announcing their IP address, their uh, underlay uh, IP address that's receiving the VXLAN encapsulated traffic up into the network, and then the switches are distrib uh, distributing it around. And so, you know, this is interesting because we don't have to have MLAG configured with all of the kind of complexity and brittleness and proprietariness of the various MLAG uh, protocols. We, we do support MLAG, but we just didn't do it in this one. Um, and since both the servers and the switches are running Linux, we were able to use a common set of tooling, uh, in this case, Ansible and Git. And that way we could have, for example, the template that configures BGP on the servers is the same template that configures BGP on the leafs, which is the same template that configures BGP on the spines, uh, because we used a, a configuration called unnumbered BGP, where the only thing that changes in the configuration of each uh, router is its own local IP address. There's no IP addresses on each individual link. Um, and of course, since these were Dell open networking switches, we were able to use Oni to automatically install um, uh, install Cumulus Linux on the switches. So one, once we had a topology, um, we obviously, given the time constraints that we had, wanted to be able to prove it out in a virtual environment. So one nice thing about the Cumulus Linux is that they have the VX uh, available for download for anybody who might want to try it, uh, and as well as us, uh, to be able to prototype it. So essentially what we did is this, but virtual machines. Um, topologically, it's exactly the same. Uh, we did have two spines and four leaf switches, again, all running Cumulus VX, uh, and then a number of uh, virtual machines running Red Hat OpenStack platform. Um, that helped us to be able to prototype the Ansible playbooks that uh, we were going to end up using in the, uh, in the physical world, in the phys physical lab once we were, had access to it. Um, Again, just being able to build up the inventories, that kinds of thing. Um, once we had all that going, we moved on to the physical. Uh, again, we used exactly the same Ansible playbooks we wrote uh, when we were prototyping in the lab, uh, and we're able to use that to deploy uh, the overcloud. Uh, we did those in batches, uh, primarily due to some hardware constraints that we had. Uh, it, it was just easier to do it that way rather than 300 all at once. Um, if, if we had some slightly more substantial systems, we would probably have been able to do it one, in one step. Um, but once we had that deployed, uh, we were able to create a thousand tenant, a thousand tenant networks across compute nodes, uh, and then uh, do some testing on them. Yeah, and you know, to emphasize just how easy it was to move from the virtual prototype to the actual deployment, we literally just checked out the same. Git tree with Ansible scripts in it and, yeah. and ran it. And you know, I was pleasantly surprised that it worked first try. Um, so you know, what, did, what did we end up with? So you know, we had the common tooling. In this case, we only took advantage of the common tooling for the deployment and management. But we could have also installed common monitoring. So you know, if we'd wanted to use Collect-D or something like that to monitor the system, we can use the exact same collect -D on the servers and the switches so that we can get a unified view. Um, we can have a single pane of glass that's showing us the entire system in an integrated fashion. And uh, the networking side, I mean, this probably, the, the small stripped down version testing in VMs probably took five minutes to deploy. The full version with all 24 switches took about 15. Um, Oni, Oni itself, uh, which is essentially the moral equivalent of Pixie, only it supports things like HTTP and HTTPS, so it's a little bit more modern than TFTP. Um, that took about a little under 10 minutes to install all 24, Cumulus Linux on all 24 switches. And once that was completed, the switches then reached out using a technology we call ZTP, which they basically go back to the server uh, where they got their Cumulus Linux image and ask for a script. And then they downloaded that script and 
run it. And so in this particular case, that script was extremely simple. It simply installed the um, SSH key so that Ansible could connect to SSH and configure the uh, switches the rest of the way. And then the actual Ansible configuration took about five minutes, maybe a little bit more. So, you know, all this configuration ended up being maybe 50 lines of Ansible, including the templates. Um, so it was extremely straightforward and, as I said, very fast. Do you want to talk about the undercloud? Oh. Sure. So the undercloud uh, took about six hours. Um, it's, you know, with that number of systems, it just takes a while for them to work through the process of, uh, be because uh, OpenStack Platform Director is based on Triple O, uh, you have to go through the introspection process, and then through, the, through to the deployment. Uh, so it took a little bit of time, but was successful. Uh, once we had the uh, overcloud built, uh, we were able to do some stress testing with Rally and do some analysis with uh, a project called Browbeat, uh, which is written by uh, one of my coworkers, uh, Joe Tallarico from Red Hat. I should actually take a quick moment to uh, shout out to Joe, who was uh, also instrumental in, in this project, as well as uh, Life Madsen, who uh, was on our, on our team working there. Um, but yeah, that's good. So, I mean, unfortunately, unlike many of the presentations I've given here, I don't have a giant stack of switches uh, for a live demo, and we don't have access to the lab anymore, so we'll have to settle for a screenshot. So. There's a Firefox extension I found that uh, allows you to take a screenshot of like the entire web page, even the parts that scrolled off the bottom. So while the system was up, I pulled up the Horizon uh, hypervisors uh, list so we, we could see all the various hypervisors. You can, you can see that they have the eight vCPUs and they you know, have 16 gigs of RAM and, and some hard drive uh, storage locally. We're, we're not running anything right now because this was just when it first came up. So you, know, you can see the... There's a, there's a few of these. Whoops. And there you go. You can see all uh, 298 uh, hypervisors. And we did eventually spin up uh, quite a few VMs on this and uh, about 1,000 virtual networks. Um, so we were able to, to prove out uh, what we were attempting to prove, which is that you know, we could quickly, using automation, install all of these and configure all of these nodes and then the, uh, the configuration would actually work at this scale. So that, uh, that was good and interesting because I think the previous largest deployment, OpenStack deployment with VXLAN uh, configuration we'd done was uh, about 200, a little over 200 nodes. So this was an, a nice step up from that. So hopefully this, this sounded interesting and you're, you're chomping at the bit to uh, try it yourself. And so the good news is you can do that completely for free. Um, well as long as your laptop has like eight or 16 gigs of RAM. If it doesn't, you have to buy some more RAM. But um, you can download our, uh, what we call the rack in a laptop. Uh, part two is the one that uses VXLAN, so that's probably the one you'd be interested in here. We have a part one that's uh, a very simple, traditional VLAN based. And what it's gonna do is spin up a couple of VMs. We have a, a free download called Cumulus VX, and it's a version of Cumulus Linux that runs in a VM. It runs in VMware, VirtualBox, or KVM. Um, and in this case, this, it'll spin up three of those, one representing a spine, and then two representing top of, top of rack switches. It'll also spin up two CentOS VMs, one to run the OpenStack controller, and one to be the compute node. So this is kind of the minimal um, configuration that kind of shows all the moving parts. Um, and there's also a, an external router that's pretending to be whatever your, your upstream gateway to the internet or the rest of the data center is. And so this will completely automatically configure all this, and then you can kind of poke around, and all of the code is available, so if you want to see the, the Ansible scripts that are configuring the various VMs, those are in GitHub, and you, know, you can kind of take it apart, play with it, spin up you know, nested VMs, um, and you know, play around. So if you'd like to learn more, uh, we have a press release. But since you already heard this, that's probably not very interesting now. Um, movingpackets.net did a review. They, they seemed to like it, so that was, uh, that was good. Um, as I mentioned, Cumulus VX, you can find it on our website. It's completely free to download. Um, it also has Vagrant support, so you don't even need to go to our website. You can just you know, make Vagrant pull the image down from their repository. And then all of the playbooks and, and the, the Quagga, uh, the pack, RPM package of our Quagga um, that the Red Hat folks made are available up on GitHub. Um, the, these slides will probably be available somewhere so you don't have to like frantically write all that down. And 
If you want to take the next step, we have a uh, community. You can come ask questions. People uh, can help you if you're having problems with the uh, VX or the, the virtual demo. And we have a lot of other kind of labs and demo modules that you can play with with VX um, to kind of learn interesting you know, pieces. Like, you know, this is just one to learn OpenStack with VXLAN. We have OpenStack with VLAN. We have you know, figure, configuring OSPF, BGP, you know, MLAGs, you know, just all the various kind of networking tasks that, that are common. Uh, and that's it. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we have time for questions. So which part did you spend most time troubleshooting? Introspection. I, I will say that we used uh, OSP7 for this. Uh, introspection in uh, the Kilo release is not nearly as good as it is in Liberty, uh, and thus, you know, OpenStack Platform 8 is substantially better in that regard. Yeah, I got off look easy. I only had 24 switches to deal with. They had 302 servers that they had to deal with. Thank you. So one of the things that I'd like to highlight in this one uh, is that uh, what, was the, what was the real thing that we really got out of this particular uh, proof of concept, really? Um, essentially, a common tool chain, when it works uh, in the same way as you would provision your servers, the same tool chain is now able to uh, provision the network. So uh, normally, it would have taken six hours for the networking and maybe three hours for, for, for servers. But in this case, uh, because of the common tool chain and uh, running Cumulus Linux versions, really, which are optimized for your networking, that made it so simple that uh, you, your, a common Ansible script could actually go ahead and push all those uh, network-related changes and took less than 10 minutes to, to set up the network. Um, so one more thing that I would like to say here is that uh, having, having a common tool chain essentially cannot come unless you have uh, your networking really uh, kind of follow an open networking model, really. So uh, one of the things that the networking model was following was open ON. So these switches run an ONI bootloader, uh, which essentially works like uh, a pixie boot of the server, the same way you'd be able to pixie boot and run any version of a Linux operating system on the switch itself. Uh, from that point onwards, uh, then the power of Linux really takes over, and you're able to kind of do your DevOps and rapidly change uh, your, your deployments. And the change management really happens at a very accelerated pace. Any questions? Well, I guess we've got some time. So one other uh, interesting thing. Uh, forgot to go over is that while we were doing the actual live config, as I mentioned, none of us were actually physically present. But what I didn't mention is that we were provided a VPN in. And so for the Ansible configurations, we were actually, or at least I was, I don't know exactly how uh, Red Hat folks did it. But um, I was able to have the Ansible on my laptop run Ansible locally and have it reach out over the VPN and SSH into um, all of the uh, switches to configure them. And so this is very similar to a common actual production deployment scenario where you usually wouldn't be over a VPN. It's often you're actually in the data center with your you know, laptop plugged directly into the management network, and then you can run your, your Ansible scripts uh, directly. This is very, very, very convenient. Mini public cloud. <laughs> All right, I think we are probably giving them back, what, 15 minutes? Yeah. All right. Thank you.